Jesus. You know, I was thinking this morning, I have never lost. Everybody's ready? Mm -hmm. I'm going to call this work set or this public forum of the Board of Education to order. April, would you please call the roll? Ms. Byer? Here. Mr. Boswell? Present. Mrs. Danick? Here. Mrs. Duncan? Here. Mr. Mayhew? Present. Ms. Mumgard? Here. Dr. Rauner? Dr. Rauner is excused. The Open Meetings Act is posted in the back of the actually between the two doors in the back of the room. Tonight we're here for a presentation, a public presentation of the 2021 preliminary budget. Dr. Liz Standish will have a short PowerPoint and then we will open the floor for a conversation from our participants. Dr. Standish. Yep. Well, thank you and thank you for the budget forum. We had a great work session with the Board of Education last night and this is what we call <coughs> our preliminary proposed budget. Um, that means this is the first budget that's taken out to the public for comment and feedback. It will then become the proposed budget, which will go to the board later in August um, for adoption, and then it becomes the adopted budget. We will work through the information pretty quickly. We have a calendar of events that I just described. So we've completed our work session and we're now in the community engagement portion of our process, knowing that we're going to make adjustments um, as needed as we move into July and August. We have a year long process for our budget process that includes multiple events along the way related to certification of data, um, feedback from board members, assessing our needs from departments and working through a plan. This budget for 2020-2021 faces many challenges. We're in the second year of a significant drop in state aid. Um, we also have to try to account for the pandemic and the impact on revenue to the district that the pandemic might bring, both at the local level and the state level. We always emphasize long range planning, sustainability, and keeping reductions as far away from the classroom as possible. And this budget, though it faced many challenges, there's over 100 um, FTE positions reduced in this budget system wide but we were able to accomplish it without a reduction in force and without eliminating a full-scale program. We build our budgets, um, both an expenditure budget and a revenue budget. As we've looked at the impact of the pandemic, we know we currently have tracking from our monthly financial reports that we have um, some increases in expenditure related to the pandemic. We also know we have some decreases in expenditures, for example, in ut um, utilities. We also know that we have decreases in our local receipts. So we're lagging about 10% behind where we would have been a year ago um, for our other local receipts. And at fiscal year end, August 31st, those numbers will come together. Um, and we will look at if revenue exceeds expenditures, um, then we can add to our cash flow position. Um, if revenue exceeds expenditures, we do need to draw from our cash flow position. So those answers will be reported publicly through the annual financial report, which is a state required filing, and the external audit that's statutory required by the board. This budget faces not only challenges that are real and known, like the drop in state aid, it also faces many challenges that are unknown. So there's a great deal of uncertainty about local receipts, what the local economy is going to do, the impact on the state economy, the forecasting board, how that plays out in the legislature, what our local property values do, and the economic recovery and revenue forecast. We also have some uncertainty of families making decisions about student enrollment um, under a pandemic, which is something we've never experienced before. 
So knowing that this budget faced many challenges, um, the Finance Committee wanted to pursue what options were available for the general fund and if we were to maximize the revenue available to the general fund. So we looked at a comparison of last year, a dollar four for our property tax receipts plus 132, almost 133 million in state aid. So with those two primary revenue sources, we had $380 million. At $1.4, that dropped to 367 And if we were able to put together a proposed budget at $1.5, that drops $10 million to 369 So state aid is the big variable that is swinging for us, that is causing a lot of the work that we're doing related to reductions. Um, we have had a significant drop or a $20 million drop in state aid. In part, that is because our needs have stabilized a bit. Um, student growth variables only kick in once you exceed 1% growth. Currently, we're not exceeding 1% growth as a system. So as those needs stabilize and as our valuation goes up, our state aid does go down. That's how the equalization formula works. Um, Lancaster County shares with us their valuation. Um, and we know we have protests, so we're currently using an estimate of 3%. This gives you that historical look of the 3% valuation growth. And we know that our number will not match the certified number. Um, it's a really big number. And so um, we will then adjust based on cash flow. Um, if it comes in higher, we'll adjust cash flow utilization down. Um, if it comes in lower, we'll probably look back to our reduction plan to see if there's anything we need to consider. Or cash flow is also a possibility. So some of the things related to the levy. First, we had um, a bond issue in 2020. And part of that bond issue, we were out in the community quite a bit talking about the bond fund and the building fund levy. So when we were approaching that bond issue, we identified the bond fund levy at 15.1 cents and potentially the building fund levy at an additional penny as funding streams that could support bonds at 16.1 cents. It's important to keep in mind that that building fund levy of a penny is actually tied to the general fund. Um, so $1.05 is the maximum there. Based on a very positive bond issuance or bond sale in April um, and very favorable interest rates, we believe that we're estimating the bond fund levy at 15.4 cents. So we looked at options where we could propose the general fund levy at $1.05, knowing that the expectation would be to create a plan where the total district levy would stay flat. So the general fund and building fund could be at that $1.05 focusing on the general fund, which is where the revenue is needed now. Um, and the bond fund can accommodate the needs of the 2020 bond program with a total flat levy of the district at $1.22. And these are just estimates. We actually don't have all the detail in the certification evaluation um, that we don't get until August. So all these numbers will have to be looked at again then. We do have our source of funds um, is increasing property taxes from 54% to 57 and our state aid is just decreasing just as I discussed. You can see our total overall revenue is down. Student enrollment um, is a bit of a question mark for us as families are making decisions around the pandemic, but this is our live birth cohort from our assessment and evaluation office. Um, if our students cohort forward and if we get the same percentage of live births entering kindergarten that we would expect in a given year, we would have approximately 247 more students. We look to our strategic plan as a resource as we're making decisions about reductions or additions to the budget. This budget does include both reductions and additions. Um, the negotiated contract for our teachers at 2.81%, valuation 3%, general fund levy $1.05, the state aid decrease, the student increase. And this budget does propose over $11 million in general fund reductions or cuts. As we approach that reduction plan, we wanted to keep it as far away from the classroom as possible. We wanted to focus on attrition, not riffing, but a reduction in force where people would actually lose their employment. This was really looking at those vacant positions. We also looked at overall lines like contracted services, equipment and supplies, travel as places to reduce, um, very hard decisions around our depreciation fund and equipment needs of the district just getting the, some of that equipment up to a lifespan 
that would be ideal for the district, so we'll be losing some ground there. We reduced the what are called staffing points out to buildings, which is resources out to buildings, and we asked, overall, we asked our department budgets to decrease 3%. So the general fund budget of expenditures is up very slightly, less than one half of 1% at like a 0.4%. And we know that we've asked our staff across the board, teaching staff, all of our staff, to do very unprecedented things during unprecedented times. And we know we are entering a very unprecedented year. So knowing that staff has been, is continue to be asked coming into the next school year of going above and beyond. Um, this is fully funding and that second year of that negotiation package increase of 2.81. So our big, our biggest change in the budget is the increase need, needed at 12.1 to fund the salary and benefit package for existing staff. We also went through a process of reductions at the school settings. You can see the various positions um, that were reduced. Once again, these were not individual jobs where people lost their job, this was actually movement in the system. So overall with the reductions and the increases, school staffing was decreased 3.7 million. Our curriculum and instruction department reduced FTE um, and ELL along with media, school improvement, and TCA. So about 1.8 million there when you look at curriculum and instruction. Student services, this is a place where we looked at that strategic plan. Um, so school counselors and school nurses are two areas that we're continuing to invest in as a school district with increases. Early childhood is another area. This budget very much focused on student needs. So looking at early childhood as a place where we had a need um, to serve additional students, specifically students with disabilities who turn three and require a placement within an early child classroom in Lincoln Public Schools. So this is an increase of a little over half a million, over 600,000. And then the interaction between the grant fund, there's an additional need to support that early childhood plan of 152,000. Special education, this is about a 1% reduction. So once again, student needs and special education drove the reduction. Um, and the curriculum department also had places that were higher than the 3% reduction as they were all working together as a team. So these are the reductions that you can see from special education. Business affairs at district office, reductions for the 3%. So this is a division that um, fell under just kind of the flat 3% expectation along with facilities and maintenance and transportation. We had some increases here related to additional route needs in the district. Um, so that was offset with a reduction to that depreciation fund and general administration at the 3%. Computing services, this is looking at our class plan and reducing the class plan, however, extending the life of the devices we have on hand will keep us covered for one more year. And then next year we'll have to have a pretty thoughtful conversation about the technology plan and what grade spans we cover. Human resources, that department fell within the 3% expectation, um, but then with the addition of the insurance premiums, which do exist and are an, a, a necessary cost for the district, the total increase was 54,000. And the superintendent and board of education office um, this does represent the 3%, but across the divisions, the multicultural education and equity um, was not held to that same reduction. We would have needed to reduce some um, money for professional development there, so we kept that in place and looked to other areas. So there's a one-pager that kind of describes the increases and the decreases, and this gives you an idea of how Lincoln Public Schools compares um, to other school districts. We're 212 out of 244 for per student spending, and we spend below the state average. So there's a lot of challenges, known challenges and unknown challenges in this budget with a great deal of uncertainty. We did prioritize student needs, specifically multicultural equity, special education, school nurses, and early childhood. We always work with a three-year forecasting model. That includes how we move cash flow from year to year to make that work. And the goal is always to provide that stability. I will share that what has to happen in future years related to reductions um, very much is dependent on the economic recovery from the pandemic when that comes and the depth and duration of the economic impact from the pandemic. 
and my team is always ready um, and able and happy to answer questions and I work with an amazing group of people who help put this all together. So that gives us the highlights and the big picture for the budget forum but our key uh, mission tonight is to hear from the community. So I will step aside and we will open up the podium to community members who want to share um, information and perspectives on the budget. And since I don't have any blue cards tonight because we're going to have blue cards, do you have any questions because you're our kind of public tonight? Yeah, we, we typically don't use blue cards at the forum because people can just come up and um, share their thoughts on the budget. It's more of a forum concept, so we're happy to do that. No. No, you understand <laughs> it. I was on the, on the uh, Southwest Booster President for a couple of years. My, my uh, oldest, my youngest daughter is a senior, so I kind of want to get involved more at the city level. Um, you hear people complain all the time about property taxes and and Lanny, uh, Lanny, he came to the, our meeting and he did a fantastic job. And I thought it was great, him and, and uh, Jason Peterson, uh, oh, Darren Peterson. Yeah. Um, it was very eye-opening and I thought, you know, rather than just sit there and keep complaining about property taxes, uh, you know, actually learn what, what we're getting. And it's interesting that we're that far down on spending per student and yet uh, I have uh, clients all across the country that are amazed at our school system. And I thought you guys last night, just on a personal note, it, it was amazing watching how calm you guys stayed. I don't know how you do it. Uh, I thought it was just tremendous. Um, experience. Experience, and one last thing. Masks. <laughs> yeah, there's no amount of masks in this mouth. But, uh, one last thing, Dr. Joel, uh, you know, we, we talked about show choir. He took time after being here for four and a half hours to listen to me go blubbering on and on. And I wanted to say thank you. And Karen Vanderford confirmed a lot about what you they released in an article. And, you know, I'm not a big fan of these things. It fogs my glasses. I get headaches. But I also helped uh, Dr. Rauner and Dr. Rice from Urgent Care Clinic put some stuff out to the business community, and I'm just continue marking it. And this is the best way we're going to fight this. And if, I can, if this helps my Kira to have as best a senior year as she can, by God, we're all going Mm, yay. Did we tape record that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it's, it, some of my friends be shocked. <laughs> if we don't have anyone else, Liz, do you want to wait a couple minutes or do you want me to let everybody go home because we were here till the cows came home last night? I think the oh. cows were home already. Yeah. <laughs> There's nobody in the hallway, right, John? No. Okay. Then I'm going to... Before I end, I want to thank our finance team, Kelly, Kim, the whole group, uh, Liz. Yay. For the ones who got the night off, would you please extend our thanks? And April, because you were here till the house came home last night as well. Yeah. Jim, yes, sir. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to remind everybody, just so you know, that unless the governor extends the... Uh, waiver of the open meetings exemption it it ends uh, at the end of June and I know we have the virtual meeting tomorrow night but we don't have any other meetings scheduled until July and I just want to make sure everybody was aware M maybe it will be I guess we'll find out but if it's not then uh, virtual, we'll, we'll kind of be back in this format. We're going to be normal? Well, as I don't normal know if it'll be we normal. Be. We'll still have our masks on probably, but um, I just wanted to make sure everybody knew that. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. This is the new normal. They could make these in more colors and I'd be happier, but... Uh, I lost my customers once. <laughs> <laughs> With that, I am going to adjourn this meeting. Thank you. You guys can get home for dinner. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> 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 <laughs>